there is one thing I know about Christine. She's a writer. She's a mentor. She's a body bearer. Those are the things that I've known about her, and she knows how to keep her home. May the Lord bless you, Christine. And thank you for honoring us. We are very small Bethlehem people, but we are rich. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, the honor of the married ministry today to introduce the speaker for the day. Uh, the Lord's battle acts in the place of family and relationships. And uh, bear with me as I do a little bit uh, of her biogra uh, background and I will introduce her. She needs no introduction though, I mean the anointing precedes her. But uh, let me give you a little bit of, uh, of what uh, the Lord has been doing in the life of our speaker. I want to introduce to you Reverend Mrs. Christy Baturio Wefu. She is the director and pioneer of Restore 180 Concepts Limited. Christy Baturi has a full-time ministry since 1989 and is the president of Sinqua, Sinqua No Ministries, Port Harcourt. Christy has a background in electrical, electronics, engineering, but opted, oh, take light. Oh. But opted for ministry as she found, she found more fulfillment there. Christy is a member of the American Association of Christian Counselors, a certified life coach, and a member of the American Association of Sexual Addictions Therapists. An arm of the ministry, PAC Network runs leadership training for churches and individuals on addictions and recovery. It also runs seminars for corporate organizations on the effects of addictions on quality and productivity. In January of 2015, she opened 180 Degrees Rehabilitation Center, probably the first drug and other addictions Stop out. All I regret. I think so. Sorry about that. In January 2015, she opened 180 Degrees Rehabilitation Center, probably the first drug and other addictions rehabilitation center in the south-south zone of Nigeria in Port Harcourt. She has written seven books and also has six albums. Married to uh, Greg Agwefu, they make their home in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, and have seven children. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, with standing ovation, let's welcome the first time in Jesus love for the blessing ministry. Our distinguished speaker of the day, Reverend Mrs. Christy Baturi, also an engineer and a battle act for the Lord, and she will do justice to me. Thank you. Please help me lift up your hands to Jesus. He's the one that is the reason we gather. He's a merciful God. I love the testimonies I just heard this evening. They are further proof that we serve the only living God. Lift up your hands to him in gratitude that you can even lift them up. There are people whose brains have disconnected from the hands and they can't lift the hands because the hands don't work. Can you think for your eyes because your eyes can see, your ears can hear. Your tongue can taste your food. Thank him because you don't contribute anything for your kidneys to work. For your liver, for your liver to work, you don't contribute anything. Your heart has been beaten from the day you were born. It has not stopped beating once in one minute or ten seconds. If you are 50 years old, this heart has been working for 50 years without any contribution from you. Can you appreciate him? Appreciate him because these are things that we don't consider. We're looking for big, big miracles. Meanwhile, incredible miracles are happening right within our bodies. When the choir was singing, 
You heard the songs and they stirred your spirit. But that's because your ears can hear. There are people whose world is silent because they can't hear. They said, come and testify. There are people who have a testimony but their tongues cannot form words. So they are silent. There are people who can't see the colors that we see because their world is black, is dark. Can you thank God? Intentionally, I am intentional about gratitude and thanksgiving. Uh, because in Romans chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible says, Because that they knew him as God, but would not honor him as God, neither were thankful. The moment they became ungrateful, God turned his back on them. Can you, can you shut everybody out and just give God thanks? Think about something specific and say, God, for this one, I am saying thank you. We can never thank him enough. We can never thank him enough. Father, we appreciate you. We worship you. We honor you. We are your people, Lord. You are our Father and our God. You hold us. You shape us. You sharpen us. You grow us. You challenge us. Lord, today help us to grow a little more. Help us to grow a little more. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. It's a privilege for me to be here. I've never been on this street and I've been in Port Harcourt for 30 years. I have never been on this street. So thank you for making me know one more place in Port Harcourt. Not to even think that there's a hall like this here. Beautiful. God bless you all. Thank you for inviting me. So I sing. So I'm going to sing. Amen. If home is really where the heart is, then home must be a place we all can share. For even with our differences, our hearts are much the same. And where love is, we come together Someone smiling, someone dreaming, we can live together there. Love will be our home. Wherever there are children singing, on a tender heart is meeting, we can live together there. Love will be our home. At home, we all can be a family, yes, and love brings us together in one place. And though we may be far apart, our hearts can be as one, and love brings us together face to face. Someone smiling, someone dreaming, we can live together there. Love will be our home. Where there are words of kindness spoken, and the vow is never broken, we can live together there. Love will be our Oh. 
when people get into relationships with the idea that they are coming to be served, we have a problem. Because what God calls us to is to serve one another. When we reverse order, we get chaos. Every time you reverse order, chaos is the result. So, the first thing that a woman would do that would disqualify her, like those boys that were running for Jamaica, is what is called negativism. We are so good at that, us women, we find it very difficult to let our husbands forget mistakes that they made, missteps that they made, wrong decisions that they may have made in the past. We don't let it go. We keep reminding them. We keep holding them to that. We, we are so negative, our husbands become afraid of us. I see men afraid to go home. They go home when the wife is already asleep and they sneak out of the house before she wakes up. Why? She's going to remind them of their points of failure, their points of inadequacy, their points of, of loss and shame. Women, we need to watch that. When you become a negative woman, you disqualify yourself from receiving a blessing from your husband. I don't have a lot of time, so I can't dwell on any point for long. The second thing that a woman can do to disqualify herself from receiving from her husband is the word narcissism. Narcissism is an inordinate occupation with self. You are so occupied with yourself, so focused on yourself, so, so turned in on yourself, nobody else matters. Sometimes our husbands sit down and they're looking at us and we are fixing our hair, fixing our makeup, fixing our nails, fixing our lashes, fixing our attire, marching from head to toe, and the husbands will be wondering, I wonder the day I will ever get this kind of attention from this woman. Hello ladies, hello ladies. Our hair, there's one they call bone straight now. The thing is causing katakata in the world. Bone straight hair, weak, weak. Some women have fought their husband, I must wear that wig. I must wear that wig because see Sister Chigan, see Justice Jane, see Sister John. They are all wearing it. I have to wear it. I always ask women to ask this question. After you wear it, please ask. And so? And so is a phenomenon for me. So what? Even the bone straight, it get gray. Can I wear bone straight of 9,000? Meanwhile, the one you saw Sister Chichi of your wearing is 90,000. Your husband's salary and your own in a month, you know it's 90. So you are wearing bone straight, and so what? How does that affect the price of Ghana in the market? Please, do you understand what I'm saying? We are so focused on ourselves. We will go to the people who sell handbag. Madam, I don't get all the money, I like this bag. Can I pay three times? The woman say, yes, pay three times. Then you will turn around and say, ah, I pay. My husband's birthday is coming, but many things are so expensive. Ah, to buy anything for a man, I beg go. Why don't you go to the person selling and say, okay, I won't buy this shoe for my husband, I don't get all the money. Can I pay three times? Hello? Am I saying something? Yes! Why do you think you can pay three times for your own? But you will not allow the Spirit of God to minister to you, to pay three times for your husband's gift. Why are you always waiting for him to be the one doing the giving? What have you given your husband in the last 10 years? I want to be weekend. 10, I'm not saying one year, 10 years. The big, the
for a wife. Even the man who said, I don't want my wife to walk. The day he enters trouble and she brings 50,000 naira, he said, hey, my wife, you have money. God bless you. Thank you for having this money. But you told her not to walk. No man wants a liability. No human being wants to feel that all he is there for is to be milked and milked and milked. Everybody wants to know that when the chips are down, somebody cares enough to give back to me. Is there anybody who doesn't like receiving? Raise your hand. You don't like receiving. Let me see your hand. Aha. Uh -huh. Men, how many of you would like to receive gifts from your wife? Let me see your hand, men. It's a prophecy. Oh, raise your hand so that your wife will see. And God will look for something for you. Amen. Especially those of you that have not received anything for 10 years. May the Lord bring healing in Jesus' name. There's one man raising his two hands at the same time. Praise the Lord. That will stop a wife from receiving from her husband, receiving grace, receiving love, receiving attention, receiving generosity, anything that can be given. You will negate it if you also show signs of nagging. Nagging. Oh, nagging. When we go to the second part of the sharing, you will understand and then you will forgive some things. But nagging has actually be shown scientifically as part of the development of the woman's brain. We nag. When we think we're not being heard, we nag. When we think we have a point and he's not seeing it, we nag. When we think our idea is better, we nag. But let me tell you something, women. If you nag your husband and he knows what you are nagging him for, is because he decided to do it. It's not your nagging. Let me tell you what you do when you nag. The first time you say it, he will hear. The second time you say it, he will become resentful. The third time you say it, he will raise a wall. Immediately you start saying, the wall comes up, he doesn't hear you. That's why sometimes that time you have shouted and talked, 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 talked talk for five hours. You say, honey, are you hearing me? You say, mm hmm. <laughs> Hello. You were just expressing yourself and finishing your prayer. He's not listening. No man likes to be nagged. When you nag a man, you are challenging the, you are challenging the office that God gave him as leader, as head. You challenge it. And when you challenge that, the man will react negatively. Because you're trying to strip him of something that God gave to him. What am I saying? Please don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I am not talking about submission here. I am talking about simply respecting order. Like I said earlier, if you if you if you mess with order, you get chaos. God said the man is the head, the wife is the help. One thing that women don't understand is this: if a man wants to lift up a basin from the ground to put on his head. Do you think he will call a child? Can a child help him? No. He has to find somebody who has capacity to raise equal or even more weight than he so that you can help him to lift it and put on his head. So when God calls you the helper woman, he doesn't put you in a disadvantageous place. He doesn't put you in a subordinate place. He puts you in the place of somebody who is equal or greater. That's the only way you are able to help him. But when you don't recognize that ministry, you start fighting for his office and then we have a problem. So a woman said to me in counseling, but ma, every time I leave him to make a decision, he makes no sense decisions and we suffer for it. God did not say that only if he makes good decisions should you follow. He said just follow. Let me give you a story. My husband is a businessman. He gets contracts, he does businesses. Me, I'm a preacher. One day he came home after many, many, many contracts. I said, oh, Christy, I got this contract. That time petrochemical was booming. I got this contract and something checked in my spirit. And I said to him, honey, don't do this business. He said, ah, ah, ah. Since when? What do you know about business? I better stay with your mind. 
microphone. That's why he told me, stay with your microphone, I know what I'm doing. He went and did that business and lost millions of naira. He came back by himself to tell me, take Christy. I said, yes. Yeah. You know that job you told me not to do? I said, yes. Yeah. You know I did it? I said, no. He said, I lost my money. Hey! That was my opportunity. I did you see yourself? I'm the spiritual one in this house. I'm a reverend. I heard from God. I spoke to you, you didn't listen. Now you have lost our money. I hope you have my students school fees, so you know what will happen? He will never tell me anything again. Those of you that are complaining that he doesn't tell me anything. The first one he told you, what did you need? What did you need? He told you and you castigated him, so you shut him down. I told my husband, sorry. You lost your money. I am so sorry. God will bring another job. He said, Amen. Two years later, he had done many other jobs. Another job came. I felt that same check. And I said to him, don't do this job. He said, no, Christian, I beg, I beg, I beg. I know what I'm doing. I've done all my calculation. He lost his money. Second time, he came back and told me again. He said, my man, that said, oh. <laughs> good for you, but I don't talk up. I said, sorry, my husband. You lost your money. Sorry. Go to bring another business. He went again after about eight months, I think. He got another job. He came again. Christian. I got this job. I felt that thing again. I told him. He said, no, no, nothing can go wrong on this one. He did the business. He lost his money. He came back and he told me. I still told him, so listen. When you tell your husband something and he doesn't listen, leave him. He goes to jam wall. When he jams the wall, the only place he can come back to, guess what? It's for you. So you are like this. You don't have to say, I told you so. He knows that you told him so. Praise the Lord. He lost the business in third time. He told me, I told him sorry. What started happening after then at Poly is that every time you got a job, you come. Uh -huh. Christy, come and talk now before I put my money and lose it. Come and talk now. If you didn't know the history, you will leave my house and go and say, hey, that woman don't talk that. Jesus spoke to the disciples and said, go and lose the dog. 
about him. And he said, if anybody asks you, who would say the master has need of him? No other question was asked. Guess what? Jesus could not have ridden on a used donkey. So he had to be an unused donkey. That donkey was being kept for the day of his glory. Because the Bible says, men began to remove their expensive garments. And they were putting on this donkey that nobody wanted to ride. This donkey that was tied up and was useless. God was preserving for the day of glory. Listen, my dear. Being quiet is not stupidity. Silence is a powerful weapon for women. If you learn it, many things will go well. Praise God. Those are the three. For the men, three things men will do that will disqualify them from receiving from their wives. Number one is abuse. Abuse. Physical, spiritual, financial, sexual, emotional, psychological abuse. Isolation abuse. I know women who are not allowed to have friends, whose families are not allowed to relate. I have a friend. She was married for 14 years. And in those 14 years, no member of her family was allowed to come to her house. Number two, they were not even allowed to phone the landline. If they needed to talk to her, they waited until she went to work before they could call her. To the point where her parents were attacked in South Africa. The father had a spinal cord problem. And they went for surgery in South Africa. And the day they arrived, they were leaving the airport. And robbers followed them and collected all the money and everything they brought, plus the man's drugs. And the mother was trying to reach the daughter. She called one of the other daughters, and the daughter called the house because it was an emergency. It was the husband that picked. And he said, what is it? She said, this is what happened to our parents. I'm trying to tell my sister. He banged the phone. And he went to the wife. Have I not warned you that none of your members, family members should call this house? Don't tell them not to try that again. Tell that your sister never to call my house again. Anyway, your parents were robbed in South Africa. And the girl fell apart. She ran to my house. She was wailing. She doesn't know anybody in South Africa. Thank God for pastor work. I don't go to South Africa and preach like four times. I get friends. I just call them pastor, pastor, pastor. All of you now, somebody needs a pastor. Mm -hmm. And they ran to them and that's how they were able to eat that day. And yet this man is a very rich man. Some of you don't know that isolation is abuse. The wife needs you, but you are not the only one she needs. She needs other relationships in her life. Your husband needs you, but you are not the only other person he needs. He needs other relationships in his life. Because I hear women say to me, hey, he doesn't tell me anything. He let tell his mother and his sisters. They are not listening to me. That man you married was probably 30 years old when you married him. He has known his mother and his sisters for 30 years. You, two years. He has learned to trust them. He knows the ones he can trust and the ones he cannot trust in his family. You can't just walk into his life in two years and tell him to shift allegiance. No. You earn it. You don't demand it. Hello. You earn it. Praise the Lord. So abuse will disqualify you from receiving from your wife. The Bible says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. And the road of correction will drive it far from him. It means that Cain, Ulama, Koboko in the house is not for the spouse. It's for the children. You can't hit your wife and expect to receive from her. When you hit your wife, she begins to distrust your hands. Those same hands that slapped her, she cannot trust them to bring love. How can the hands that punched me come to hug me? I will not take such a hug. I will be very, very suspicious. You will not receive from your wife when you are abused. I went to minister to a couple's fellowship like this. And during the question and answer, a lady sent me a question. She said, ma'am, is it okay for a man to be calling his wife goat? Everything I do, goat. Every mistake I make, goat. I thought about it and I said, yes, it's okay for a man to call his wife goat. And everybody said, ah, uh -uh. how can this woman say that you should call wife goat? I said, no, it's okay for the man to call his wife goat. But if she is a goat, the man is a he goat. 
son. Yes. So you remember growing up, right? When mom and dad are going out, who do they call? Keep an eye on everybody. I don't want to come and hear that they broke plate or broke this or broke the window. Mommy will go. You, you are sitting down reading your book. If I will kick ball, bah, break the glass. You, you will be there saying, hey, mommy's coming back. You see yourself. Mommy comes back and the first thing she sees is the broken glass. So just let her call your name. True or false? Where were you? When he broke the glass? You get more pity than he that broke the glass. True or false? So man, when God calls you the head, be careful how you collect the title. Because <laughs> if something spoiled, guess who God will call? You. Yeah, I'm the head, I'm the head. Be keeping the title. When anything spoiled, now your name they will call. If you go to one, now your name they will call. So choose. Carrying the title well is hard. Carrying it badly is hard. Choose your heart. Will you choose the heart that you will collect accolades from God? Or you choose the heart that you will be ashamed before God? Every man needs to scrutinize his philosophy concerning marriage. Does it line up with the word of God or with the traditions of your people? Praise the Lord. Second thing that will disqualify a man from receiving from his wife, I mentioned abuse, I will mention addiction. Addiction. I run a rehab center. I have addicts that they bring to my rehab center of all ages. All ages. And I see the brokenness in wives when it's their husbands that come to the rehab. I see the anger. The mix is a mix of emotions. Sometimes they're not even able to define what they're feeling at any point in time. Because the money for school fees goes. The money for house rent goes. The money for investments goes. The money for food goes. Relationships fall apart. People they could have come to for help, the people that are addicted mess with the relationships and they can't go to them anymore. All kinds of things. So she's angry, she's broken, she's ashamed, she's tired, she's frustrated, she's resentful. My dad, my dad died from addiction. I saw my mom shrivel and shrivel and shrivel and shrivel the deeper my father got into his addiction. It's one of the reasons I run a rehab center, people. I live with it all my life. My dad died from addiction. My oldest brother died from addiction. My four sisters died from addiction. Only one sister died a normal death. She was nine years old. She wasn't old enough to start the, the road of addiction. Out of eight children that my father and mother had, six have died. Only two remain. My mother and father are dead. So the family of ten has shrunk to a family of two. It's addiction. The other person that is alive is only alive because three years ago, he carried his bag and came to the rehab and said, help me, let me not die like the others. That's why he's alive. I know the devastation that addiction brought to our family. And he started way back. My dad was already an addict before we were growing up. My dad, I stopped drinking when I was 10. Because I've been mean, follow them too. I stopped drinking at the age of 10. Some people go ask me, I wish that I'd be best at now. <laughs> I started at the age of 2. My dad would give you to drink. And the stupid reason was, I want to see how you behave when you are drunk. Can you, can you believe that? Addiction does not allow you to think straight. Addiction, addiction messes with the prefrontal cortex of the brain here yeah, in front. It does not touch the stem of the brain. The stem of the brain is what helps you to make normal work, drive a car, go to the office. So you are a functional addict. So many people think as long as I can function, I'm okay. No, you are not. You are a functional addict. So the base of the brain remains untouched by addiction. But the prefrontal cortex is messed up by addiction. And that's the part that the human uses to make rational choices and rational decisions. That's the part that addiction attacks. So you see a person who is a drunk making stupid decisions. I feel like this person they think at all. Actually, he cannot think. Why? The part of the brain that thinks has been messed up by addiction. You see how wicked the devil is? He doesn't touch this place. He touches here so that you'll be making nonsense decisions, destroying generations. Do you know, man, as my brothers and sisters were dying, all the children
children were coming to me. By the time they finished dying, I had 16 children that are not my biological children, that don't have mother or father anywhere else, and the mother and the father. 16. For the devil was not only stealing my brothers and sisters, he was piling me with pressure. And I said to God, why will you let all of them die? Why will you put me through this kind of pain? And God said to me, haven't you noticed that their children are beginning to drink too? Because the models that they are seeing are broken, so they are beginning to break early. He said, I needed to remove the broken model so that they will see a clean model. That's why I allowed your sisters and brothers to die, so the children can come to you and see a different model. This year, I have four graduates in my house. Four in one year. Years back, I had three. So, about out of the 16 children, about 11 have graduated. Yes. Yes. Three of them have married their girls. It's so exciting to see God do that. And I'm watching them following Jesus as I follow him. They're following Jesus. They are running away from alcohol, running away from substances, saying, no, this one killed my father. Why are they able to see that? Because they were removed from the atmosphere that was best up to see a healthier one, and they prefer the healthy one. Don't do addictions, people. If you have an addiction here, deal with it. When a man does not deal with his addictions, you pass on the addictive mindset to your children. It is a scriptural thing in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 2. The Bible says, what is this proverb that I hear you say in Israel? That the fathers have eaten sour grapes, but the children's teeth are set on edge. It's the fathers who sin, but the children are paying for it. It's, it's, it's spiritual genetics. If you go to the hospital and you have high blood pressure, your doctor will ask you, who has high blood pressure in your family? Your father or your mother? It's genetics. Uh, uh, diabetes, things like that. If there is physical genetics, people know that there is spiritual genetics. And that's what is found in Ezekiel 82. Let me quickly go to the last one. The third one that will break any woman and, and stop you, disqualify you from receiving from your wife is affairs. Extramarital affairs. There's nothing more painful to a woman than to know that her husband has taken what is sacred, what is private, what is intensely intimate and taken it to a third party outside. It's not only a violation of God's law, it's a violation of everything holy about your relationship. If you commit adultery, you disqualify yourself. You have no right to expect anything from your wife. That's the design of God. I see men who commit adultery and their attitude is like, I, I am a man. Since when did the definition of man become jigolo? Or show anything in a skirt or rapper? Who redefined man? God had an, a, a model in mind and he created the model. Who redefined it? He said, you know, it's in our nature uh, to have more than one more. Whose nature? Was man created in the image of a polygamist or a, an adulterer? No. In the image of God and he is holy. Adultery is unholiness. I can't get into the consequences of adultery today. Maybe God will give me another opportunity. Praise God. So, what did I say disqualifies a woman from receiving from her husband? Number one? Negative. Huh? Negative. Negativism. Number two? Narcissism. Narcissism. Number three? Nagging. Okay, what did I say disqualifies a man from receiving from his wife? One. Two. Three. Thank you very much. Have you been blessed? Did you receive anything? Yes. Praise God. All right, in the next 15 minutes, I think that's the amount of time I have. Yeah, I'll be done. So can you, media, help me put up the female brain? Let me show you what science has discovered about the development of the male and the female brain. I want you to see some things. It will settle many quarrels for house. Put up the female brain, let me see. If you can find the colored one, that would be better for me. Now this is black and white. I have a colored one inside that flash drive. 
Okay, make it bigger. We'll go with it. Make it bigger. You can't find it. Can you magnify, can you magnify this? No, from the top there. Okay, thank you. But well, you have cut off some things. I can't see some things. No, no. Can you go to the square box and click there so these other things on the screen will go away? Just the picture. Yeah. That, no, if you do PowerPoint, you can't do that. Can't you, can't you bring this thing not from PowerPoint? Can't bring it ahead. Oh, oh, thank, no, this is male. Go to female, please. Female. Yes. Okay. So this is the female brain. Science says this is how the female brain has developed over time. And I want you to look at something. I want to start from the biggest ones. See the one at the top there. It says shoe and handbag coordination. It's part of the woman's brain. Shoe and handbag coordination. No, but don't worry. I'm going to ask the media to copy the image, print it and give every couple. So that the men will put woman brain for their side of the mirror. The woman will put man brain for the side of their mirror. Whenever something happens, you just say, hey, whoa, it's okay, it's the brain. Praise the Lord. All right, so. Amen. And be 
before he fell, I saw what was coming. I called his attention. I said, please stop policing me up and down. Who I want police before? The Bible says that the children of Israel will possess their possession. You are my possession. Because I don't possess. <laughs> Who would like to and be, and be policing if not you? I am the wife. Have you noticed that the Roman, the Roman uh, uh, armor in the Bible put on the full armor of God, the breastplate, the helmet, the, the, the shield, the belt, the shoes, every single item covers only the front. The back is exposed. Why? No Roman soldier is expected to turn his back on the enemy. So the back is open. Now for every man who is leading a family, all your armor is in front. You can only see straight. The person behind is your wife. She's the one that takes care of that flank that is exposed. So when she picks up something, bros, listen. The men that refuse to listen, they don't already plan for their mind to do bad things. That's why when the wife says, Pyong, they want to shout, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't already set mind to do bad things. Otherwise, you will recognize the spirituality of that woman that God placed in your life. That she has seen something coming and she said, don't go. And if I don't go, I will make money. The same God that told her to tell you not to go, we care, we care for that thing and there will be no gap. I've seen God do it. Praise the Lord. So she has a spiritual, any church you go, now women, they plan to pass. Any church. Women don't need to understand to follow. Their spiritual radar picks up. This is God. Men, it has to make sense. Why? The man is logical by creation. He has to quick, he has to, he go, he pastor preach, he go first analyze. If the analysis makes sense, he go follow the pastor. If analysis don't make sense, go. <laughs> Men, am I talking? Yes. Okay. Look at this one <laughs> by the side here. Indecision, indecision nucleus. I've seen men eh, get so angry at their wife because the wife cannot make up her mind. Two of them have gone to maybe Dubai for holiday and they decided, okay, the man said, I need three shirts and two trousers. The wife said, honey, I need to buy two dresses for this and this uh, function. So, okay, let's go to the shop. When they get to the door of the shop, they will identify a spot, say, okay, we'll meet back here in one hour. Or then we just enter the shop. Bam, blue shirt, bam, brown shirt, bam, a blue trouser, brown trouser. Five minutes, he's out. Come and sit down and look at his step. Oh, only five minutes. Okay, we said one hour, make a wait. <laughs> one hour pass, no sign of darling. Two hours, no sign of darling. <laughs> Three hours, the man will get up. What is all this? What is all the two dresses? He will now enter the shop and see his wife. There are 20 dresses on the chair. She's trying all of them. She likes the 20. The man will say, what is all this? He do that. She said, honey, look at this one. He said, okay, put it on. It was beautiful. He said, but honey, look at it in blue color. <laughs> Hello, man. Am I talking? Hey, woman. Please, whenever she's doing that, just forgive her. It's the brain. Hello. All right. Now, and there's this one. Home traffic controller. That is, she wakes up in the morning, you hear her voice. Children, ma, all the children have their bags. Honey, what are you still doing in the bathroom? Hey, you are taking so long. Honey, yeah, 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 yeah. The mom will say, why is this woman commanding me in my house? No, she's not commanding you, she's the home traffic controller. Bath, cook, clean, sweep. One and the okay. Now, there is this small one at the bottom, sense of direction. You see how small it is? It did not even develop. Sense of direction. You ask your wife, honey, eh, sister Chidima and brother John, you know they just had a baby, yes. We need to go and see them. Share you have been to the house before. Yes, 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 let's go. <laughs> on our tongue three times, she will just start looking confused. You say me, you say you know this place, but I thought that. I thought it was here with Pastor. The man would be vexing. So you don't even know the house. Instead of it to say, she has no sense of direction. Now, this will happen for 90, 
understand. Not everybody will fall smack dab into this. I have an incredible sense of direction. If I go to a place once, even in a strange city, I don't know how I notice landmarks as I'm going. It's not a conscious thing, but I can find my way. But most women, uh -uh. brother, Google map, praise the Lord. Just ask the person when they go in place, what is your address? Put it in your Google map. Let, it's better to follow Google map than to follow your wife. Because instead of ending up in a bar, you find yourself in Abraka or, or, or in, in fact, Auchi. Totally different direction. All right, now, let me come to there's a very tiny one, it's the smallest one. Ability to keep her opinions to herself. Nine people know they keep quiet. So that's why we're driving and tell my hey, look at how that man is just going. Before he answered, I would have looked. Hey, only have you seen that woman change? She looks like she's suffering. Before, you say, please, be, please. I don't want to hear. What is all this? Do they even know you are talking about them? I said, I'm just trying to make conversation. I said, I don't want to hear. Leave me alone. I'm tired. Then I'll get angry. Can you imagine? Somebody's even trying to talk. Look at how you are embarrassing me. Like, if you must say, I don't want you, you might say, you will hear this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nay, have you suffered that before? You don't want to hear, she will tell you, you will hear. The two will turn to fight. She can't keep her opinions to herself. That clan did not develop, so she has no control. She will tell you everything. All right. Look at this chocolate center. Do you see how big it is? Chocolate center is so big. Now, that chocolate center is responsible for why women eat more sweet things than men, even physically. It's a chocolate center. But more than that, the chocolate center is fed by nice words and nice gestures. That's why you find an extremely beautiful girl falling for an arm robber, convicted arm robber. And you say, but he's an arm robber. She said, he told me he loves me. <laughs> but don't you know that he said, he said I'm the best thing that happened to him. He has fed the chocolate center. She can't see he's wrong. Husbands, if you want a wife that will be eaten out of your hand, feed this center. And it doesn't cost money. It doesn't have to cost money. If you live in a compound and your wife has been the one carrying bucket for you every morning to put water to bath. One day, surprise your wife, carry bucket. You, you'll be amazed. That one bucket where you carry, you receive 10 buckets of blessing. Yeah, because you have fed the chocolate center. Ah, you look at your wife. Oh, hurry up, go. You spend that with my money. See how you are fine. See how beautiful you are. Ha! Ah. Anybody will look you are punch in face. Hey! You are fed chocolate center. Anything you are looking for, you get it. I'm not joking. These are the things that we are not taught. And we think it's only by harshness. But you see that the more harsh you are, the less you receive. Praise God. Okay, so now we have Nag Central. Can you see the nagging clan? How big it is? So it's part of her brain. She nags because the brain developed like that. So when your wife is nagging now, please, with understanding, forgive. Don't ignore, because sometimes what she's saying are really big issues for her. Please, forgive her and pay attention. It's part of her brain. Now, I have nesting instinct on top of Nag Central. That one, and the need, see the two biggest ones in her brain, the need for commitment, and romance. That need for commitment is the one that makes the woman. You ask her out once. Can I take you out to pepperoni? The next time you call her, she says, please, I want to know what are we doing. <laughs> that one time that you took her out, she has already planned the wedding. The man will be confused. Ah, now only pepperoni will go. Which one they say, what are we doing? What are we doing? We are only going out. The way the man said, we are only going out. I don't like any man to come and toy with my emotions and, and deceive me. Evo is the need for commitment. She needs you to commit. <laughs> don't be afraid when she asks you, what are we doing? Please just know that it's that part of the brain. But look at romance then. I want 
to differentiate romance from sex, please. African men, I, I intercede on you people's behalf a lot. A lot. You people don't know how to be romantic. Jehovah, only to farm, 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 farm. I have to feed my family. Any man that cannot feed his family is a failure. Please, why are you feeding? Be touching. How are you, my darling? Is it okay? Are you alright? And eh, have you rubbed powder today? That's romance for the woman. Because, because once you call romance, men think of sex. It's not. That pocket you are carrying to the bathroom once is romance. She likes Mr. Biggs' um, meat pie. But Mr. Biggs is in the opposite side of your house from your office. But you take the trouble to go to Mr. Biggs instead of buying tantalizers. And you bring. It's romance. You see handkerchief with small flower. You bought it instead of the plain one. See, my wife, I saw this handkerchief with flower. And it made me remember you. How lovely you are. Take. Hey, whoa. You hear the woman now. They say, yo. Oh. You don't already touch them. You know how to wife touch it them. Please. It's so important. Praise the Lord. All right. I like the last two. Because... So there's one more of their sensitivity to perceived criticism. When you criticize your wife, you also have to check the season that you are criticizing. It has a footnote. They say, see note one. Note one says, the size of that clan varies depending on the time of the month. If you want to criticize your wife when she's having PMS, premenstrual syndrome, something you said before that she laughed, you said that she will bite you. Be like, hey, well, what does happen? Confusion. You should check the time of the month before you, you, you criticize. And in fact, it doesn't say criticize, it says perceived criticism. That is, you never even criticize, they don't bite you. Come and talk of that, you added criticism on top. Be cool, watch it. Praise the Lord. Then I have the last two. You see that big one at the bottom is a listening gland. But see, in all of the brain, only those two are connected, the listening gland and the sex gland. See how tiny the woman's sex gland is, very small. But see that it is touching the listening gland. So when you don't listen to your wife, if she doesn't feel that you hurt her pain, or her anger, or her worry, she's unable to be sexual in the night because they are connected. Now, I want you to pay particular attention to these two. Because when we see the man's brain, you will see why there's problem in this area. If you don't pay her attention, you are not kind, you are not attentive, you are not caring, then you come to her and you want to have her body. She may give you her body, but you will know that her soul is not there. Many times you tell her, I'm ready. That headache, when they go? Every week, headache, headache. I don't know where women can find another. Another one to be saying because we don't use this headache, headache, headache. Hey! They need to give up again. <laughs> Listening and sex connected. Now, let's look at the male brain, please. Give me the male brain. Leave him 
alone. Don't say a hey, I know that he likes that football. Whenever he's watching it, I will off the TV so that he listen. Hey, you will turn to be born. He will kick you out of it. I'm not joking. Don't don't do that. It's, that is called manipulation. It's not negotiation. All right. Now, look at the next one. See how big it is. Dangerous pursuit. Dangerous. My husband turned 50 some years ago and told me, hey, honey, and somebody came to market power bike to me. I said, in this life, you will not buy power bike. I will not be a widow. What are you doing with power bike? Because it does anything, anything that makes noise and vibrates, men want it. Every time he travels, you come back with something. Honey, I saw this thing. You can shake inside your nose. After two times, enter museum. He will come back again. Honey, I saw this one. You can do it here. Two times, museum. He will come. When he said power bike, I said, don't try me. This one, I will fight till That is, we will go up our front. You are not my power bike. Dangerous pursuit, bungee jumping. When a plane is already scary enough, which one is hand gliding? Or, or you jump out of the aeroplane. What do they call that one? Paratooting or paratrooping. Parasailing. What, what is that? How many women do you see doing it? We're not plenty for them. Lie. My grandmother will ask you, ground no reach you. What did they find for her? Look at the next big one. Ability to drive manual transmission. Hey, the best thing that happened to women in this world was when they brought automatic car. Just press your leg on the accelerator and be going. <laughs> But you see that manual shift. How many women do you see driving trainer? You don't find. It's the men that have capacity, both the muscle and the patience to select gear. We will not what? select what? Just accelerate and be going. Praise God. All right, now. Look at the one at the top, power tool area. When they are building road, you see the men wielding the jackhammer. How many of you have ever seen a woman holding the jackhammer? No. It's the main power tool. Because it makes them feel like they're in charge, they're in control. Power tool. We will just be our side, they turn to for fire. Praise the Lord. All right. Then um, uh, you have this one. You see that one that is shaped like a shoe at the bottom, just like the woman's own. It says TV and remote control addiction center. Once that is coming back, you have to say, oh, CNN. <laughs> oh, National Geographic. Oh, channels. They will hold that remote and be falling asleep. If you touch the remote, they will Who is changing that channel? <laughs> but they are not watching, they are sleeping. But you can't touch the remote. So, what? Anything you want to watch, watch before they come home. After they come, retire. Retire. Amen. Don't fight. Now, <laughs> I want to come to some interesting ones. You see this one at the bottom. It says, avoid personal questions at all cost area. Avoid personal questions. When your husband comes back, can you see lipstick for your shirt? Say, honey, what is this? And what is what? <laughs> is this not lipstick? What am I you seeing? They are seeing. I don't know what you're talking about. Then what? Do I wear lipstick? <laughs> the wife will insist. Please, 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 I'm just coming back from work. They are avoiding personal questions. In fact, that goes with the one of the lame excuses clan. Lame excuse. It's part of the men's brain. Because sometimes your husband will do something. You don't catch him up. You ask him. The car is going to show where you go. You're going to look at does this man think I'm an imbecile? <laughs> Hello, ladies, am I talking? Yes! Ah, what are you explaining now? Abi Mumu? He don't explain no. He be like, die, wait, die. He's not changing that explanation. And it's a stupid explanation. Hello? Women, am I talking? 
make you think, say, whether it is a you people leave her. You have already got your answer. Don't push. Say you know that that is an answer. Leave her. Because go and pray. Or report him to whoever you can report him to. But that behavior is an answer in itself. Alright? Then, let me come to <laughs> domestic skills. You see that that one is a dot. Domestic skills. It did not develop at all. So, when you tell him to boil water and he's afraid to enter the kitchen, please, he's not pretending. His brain does not recognize it. Some men are exceptions to the rule number one. Number two, that doesn't mean you can't learn because these plants developed over time so it can be developed. Hello, before you now start telling me, hey, Reverend Christie came and she said, we don't have domestic skills. So don't expect me to be carrying the dust as I can. They will be gone, try. Okay, so... See ironing, see domestic skills, see ironing. Small, small dots. Now, I want to read one thing at the bottom. I want to read one thing at the bottom before I continue. Footnote. It says, the listening to children cry in the middle of the night gland is not shown due to its microscopic nature. It is best viewed under the microscope. <laughs> Will wake up, your husband will not talk. You hear him and say, What kind of a wicked man is this? This baby cried all night. This man knew that I have to go to work. He did not talk. Sister, it does not register in his brain. You have to view it under the microscope. That clan is not developed. So please, if he doesn't talk, it's not wickedness. He doesn't hear it. It's not part of his brain. Alright? Some men are different. Before the wife even gets up, they will get up. Some men, not everybody. But, so those are. Now, this particular one I like. Toilet aiming cell. You see how small it is? My husband. I asked him, honey, this PP that you have, were you born with it? He said, yes. I said, so all these years that you have been weaned inside toilet, why can't you win aim the PP?
they will listen to you. You know why? His attention span is short. By the time you are finished telling the whole story, he will hear whether you took the thing to the dry cleaner or not. So he wants to hear now, so that he could not say, okay, my mind don't come down. Any other thing you want to say, and as you are saying, guess what? He will tune out again. When you finish, he says, oh, honey, I'm very sorry. Is that what happened? Okay, sorry. If you ask him for the details, he can't tell you. Why? He was not listening. Attention span is small. Hello, men, am I talking? But look at the last two of us there. One is sex, the other one is sex. And each one is like 10 times bigger than the woman's sex gland. Do you see the potential for trouble? The, woman, the man has 20 times the woman's sex drive. So I hear men saying, women say, ah, man, this man is supposed to be a Christian, but it looks as if it's only sex he thinks about. Correct. Hey, who is the owner of that blue round four? Lagos number LSR 132CH. Important attention needed outside. Your wife is waiting with hammer to break this screen. Please, that's a joke. You need to move your car, you're blocking somebody. Round four, dark blue. They say he's the only sex he thinks about. And I say yes. It's not a defect, it's the design. By the time the woman struggles to satisfy number one, number two is at attention. She goes struggle, 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 beat number two. By the time she finishes to number two, number one has recharged, he's waiting. So the woman will be like, I can't do this. What needs to happen then is that both husband and wife need to bring compassion to the marriage bed. The wife needs a step up transformer, the man needs a step down transformer. That's electrical engineering lab. A step up transformer helps to boost voltage. A step down reduces the voltage. If you buy something from America, they use 110 volts in America. You bring it to Nigeria, we're 230 volts. If you plug it directly, you blow the appliance. So you need a step down transformer. The man needs a step down transformer and it can only come through the instrumentality of compassion. To say to the wife, if I have 20 times your drive, I become a problem if I don't bring restraint to that. And then if you have 20 times more than me, I become wicked if I withhold because then I'm not even satisfying half of your need. Ladies, sex for us is negligible. That's why a man can die and the wife won't marry for 10 years. We don't care. It doesn't bother us. If we, we don't have sex in this world, if they say that we can burn children through another means, we'll go follow. Because for us, sex is not a big deal. But ladies, listen to me. To the man, sex is not just a lustful thing. It's a biological need. It's not a want. It's a need. So when you deprive a man of sex, you are messing with more things than you know. So you need to pray to God to give you grace to step up and at least meet him halfway. And the man needs to step down and have compassion on his wife because she can't handle that kind of fight. Instead of fighting and punching every day or shouting or abusing her every day, bring compassion to the story and then there will be more peace in the house. Have you learned anything today? Thank you very much. God bless you. So media, you can print you can copy the picture and print it and give to every couple so that they can use it to settle quarrel every time there's quarrel. So now, men, when your wife is demanding for money, what do you say? Instead of saying, my friend, what do you say? It's the brain. Sisters, when you see we we on top of the toilet seat, what do you say? It's the brain. God bless you. Smooth loaded. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. We see why God is using as a battle axe to reach out to families and relationships and changing perceptions and changing the perceptions of husbands and women in the area of relationships. It's, uh, it's just it's too much. We can't get enough. We can't get enough. But I want to make this uh, throw this uh, uh, open so that if there are people that have questions, we can take maybe one or two or three questions. Eh? And while we have. Again, if you don't if you don't want to stand up and ask the question, you can write it and 
we'll have people around to co collect the questions from you and she can answer them, okay? So we'll just take maybe one, two or three questions. We won't, we won't overdo it. Okay, so we already have some people here. You know, Mommy Joyce is ready to ask a question. Do you have a question to ask? Okay, uh, support it at Okay, I'll tell you. Coming to you. Christina, thank you very much. You did a wonderful job. And you know, one of the, the reasons you said that women men disqualify receiving gifts from men is adultery. And I would like you to expatiate on that because in Nigeria society today, I've handled many cases of divorce and the crux of the matter, adultery. Men, men are always blind to it because they listen more to the flesh. Only when they cannot get enough satisfaction in the house, they go outside. But it has a little effect on the family. Destruction both on the men, on the women, on the children, the whole household. Can you expand sheet of that attitude? Even if it's only three points on the top four, please. It's very important. Thank you very much. Uh, say women have real as she already picked on that one. We say, ah, Reverend Mr. Patrick should have talked on that one a little bit to uh, you understand. Thank you very much. You're handing over to you. Okay, I actually have written a book titled The Devastation of Adultery. So you can you can look for it on the internet. It's on the internet, it's on my website, christiebature.com. So you find devastation of adultery. But let me touch on there are spiritual consequences to adultery, there are physical consequences to adultery, there are consequences on the adulterer, the spouse, the children, the family, the society. All of them. But I want to zero in on Job. Job in the Bible, the Bible called him. A perfect man. That's how King James puts it. A perfect man. Uh, the other translation says, a man without evil. But Job was speaking and he began to talk about the consequences of adultery. And he said, if I have looked at another man's door and I have looked at another woman lustfully, he said, then let my wife grind for other men. May other men sleep with her. Now, you have heard many times when they catch a woman in adultery, she will say he's the one who started it. He did it first. I was revenging. Have you heard that before? She was not revenging. She was dancing to this spiritual principle that if one spouse commits adultery, you open your spouse up to doing the same because it's a sin. That's number one. He said, adultery will root out all my increase. That's Job. He never committed adultery, but he had some powerful revelations about adultery. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that adultery, a man who commits adultery is reduced to a loaf of bread. It's there in the Bible. He says also that he is troubling his own household and he will reap the wind. Very soon your life will be empty because your family will walk away. And now I'm talking to both men and women. Because man, in the counseling room now, I am seeing more and more women committing adultery. I, 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 it surprises me when they come and the man is still willing to work on the marriage. Hey, one couple came. It's the wife that committed adultery. And she had the audacity in front of me to say, oh well, yeah, I know what happened was wrong. But I made my peace with God and, and he needs to get over it already. Hey! I told the man, excuse me, sir. Can you go outside? I want to talk to your wife privately. That day, I was not prepared to be a professional counselor because professional counselor, you're not supposed to show emotion. You're not supposed to show anything on your face. When the man went out, I said, how old are you? She said, 25. I said, my first three children are older than you. If you were my daughter today, I would beat your mouth out of alignment. Are you mad? How can you hurt a man like that and open your mouth to this kind of arrogance to tell me you should get over it? Who gives you the right to sin and determine how the sin will be settled? 
It's like your children. When you have told them, if you go outside without your shoe, I'll flog you for. They go out without the shoe. When you carry the cane, they say, Mommy, please, can I beg you something? I say, what? Well, can you flog me too? <laughs> Did you not hear that? I said it was for, I will flog you before you went outside. Now you want to negotiate. You can't sin and then determine the consequence. No, 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 no. So, for both of you, when you commit adultery, you have told God, Father, let my wife sleep with other men. Let my husband sleep with other women. That's what you have said. Number one, number two. Adultery will root out all your increase. Let me give you two examples from our own nation. One of the men who won election in this country as president but never became president. He died in prison. I won't call the name. The lifestyle of that man, it is adultery that got him down. He slept with mothers and daughters at the same time. Yes, he had no compunction. The other one planned to kill General Dia tomorrow morning. He didn't wake up. He died between two women. None of them was his wife. Adultery will root out your increase. You know what the devil has done? He has made us feel as though the consequences of adultery are just a slap on the wrist. But people of God, if you go to Let me go to the Bible. David was a young man in the bush. His family forgot him, but God did not. God said, make him king. And the prophet Samuel anointed him in his father's house. The Bible talks about the composition of the anointing oil. Nobody was supposed to reconstitute the anointing oil except the high priest. And the Bible says every time the oil came upon a man, he became another man. Meaning that the anointing on his life increased. There is no man more anointed than David in the Bible. Because he's the only one on record upon whom the anointing oil came three times. In his father's house in secret, thank you ma'am. In his father's house in secret, when Judah made him king, and when Israel gathered to make him king. So David was very anointed. Now, David was so anointed that when a lion came, he killed it with his hands. When a bear came, he killed it with his hands. He stood before Goliath, and he killed Goliath. He was so anointed, he would play his guitar, and demons would be leaving the heads of Saul, or the head of Saul. So anointed, that when he ran from Saul to the bush, the Bible says, worthless men gathered themselves to David. And in the wilderness, without supplies, he turned worthless men into mighty men of war. He was so anointed that when Saul fell into his hands twice, he didn't kill him because he understood times and seasons is not a time. The Bible says when they anointed him in his father's house, he didn't start going around saying, yes, I think you not forget me for bush. Now, the king now, all of you, you will bow. They would have sold him like they sold Joseph. Joseph owned, they know you who anoint that. You just dream. From dream, he begin to tell them, yes. They sold him, they said, go and be king in slavery. David understood it's not a time. He went to the bush. He killed Goliath, went back to the bush. It's not a time. He had the opportunity to kill Saul. I won't kill him. It's not a time. So now listen to this. When David finally became king, the Bible makes a very curious statement in the season when men, when, when kings went to war, David was at home. What was a warrior king doing at home in the season of war? And you know that is when the trajectory of David's life took a terrible turn. And that's when he saw Bathsheba, com committed adultery with Bathsheba, killed Uriah, and lost the child that Bathsheba had. Now, Bible says God said of David, he's a man after my own heart. But David derailed at this point. So, in the book of Chronicles, First Chronicles, I think, the Bible mentions the sons of David by name. More than 50% of David's sons died from sexual sin. Adonijah, Amnon, Absalom, Baba Solo. You can't call Solomon just like that. You have to say, Baba Solo. What is a man doing with 1,000 women? Now, Baba, you will call him. I'm not that one. Okay, so, and I was asking God, what is this? And God said, David is not the problem. The problem was Judah, 10 generations away. Judah, whom God bypassed three older sons. He was number four. And God said, the scepter shall not depart from his hand, nor the lawgiver from between his feet. Judah is king.
should have forgot that he is king. And he carelessly left his house to go and sleep with a prostitute. Hello? If you allow your erection to direct your life, you go direct and bado. Because I don't understand how Judah came to have sex with his daughter-in-law. And his erection did not allow him to recognize her. Now wait. I don't think we suspend your senses. Because who goes to sleep with a prostitute without the payment? Now free. When he has finished and the election has come down, she said, pay me. Say what? Well, I left my wallet at where? I don't see the prostitute disgracing a man that didn't pay her. I've seen it all. It's not a nice sight. The prostitute has nothing to lose. She already knows that she's disgraced. She's shameful. Everybody calls her. It's the man that has a lot to protect. When he saw that she was going to disgrace, he said, she said, give me your star. She gave him. Give me your bracelet. She gave him. Give me your ring. She gave him. Guys, let me tell you what you do every time you unzip your trouser in the wrong place. And by wrong place, I mean anywhere but your spouse or your skirt. She took his ring, his bracelet, and his star. Every time a king made a new decree, it never came into effect until the seal of his ring went there. That's your authority. When you unzip your trousers in the wrong place, you drop your authority. Two, she took his bracelet. Only tattooed men wear bracelets. Even now, if you see a man with beads, you know he's a chief or a king. Judah was the son of Israel. Israel was the prince of the east. So Judah was a tattooed man. She took his status from him. When you commit adultery, your status drops. Three, she took his staff. What is the staff? The Bible says, I run and I staff. They comfort me. The staff is what the shepherd uses to guide the sheep. That is your leadership. When you commit adultery, your leadership is dropped. So if they collect from you, your leadership, your authority, and your status, what are you? A loaf of bread. We go back to that scripture. You become a loaf of bread. Oh, let me alone. I love um, skippers' bread. Skippers. I feel by one loaf, chop and finish. Meaning that even begin can do anything he wants to you and go because of adultery. Adultery will root out your increase. Go and check the history of men who live careless sexual life and check how they ended. None of them ended well. None without sin. Because the word of God cannot be broken. It's a covenant and you break it. Can I tell you the spiritual implication? Just one and I'll be done with this question. When, 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 when preachers talk to us about sex, they tell us the obvious reasons, procreation, pleasure. But there are two other reasons I want to tell you today. When God made man in the garden, he made man for fellowship. He wanted to have communion with us. In the Old Testament, you read, and Cain knew his wife and she conceived. And Abel, no, not Abel. Lamech knew his wife and she conceived. Methuselah, she conceived. That word knew there is sexual intercourse. But in the New Testament, you see Paul speaking to the church. And he said that we may know him as we are known of him. It's the same word, intercourse. God wants to come into a place of intimacy with us. So, if our physical sexuality is messed up, guess what? The spiritual one will be messed up. And that is Satan's aim. He doesn't want us to enter into the place of intimacy with God. So he will interfere with our physical sexuality so that the spiritual one is messed up. That's one. Two, when God made man, in man was contained the male and the female. For the purpose of functionality, because he needed the earth to be replenished, God separated man into male and female. They taught me in arithmetic, in primary one, that if something is one whole, and you divide it into two, each one becomes half. True? So, every time from the moment God separated man into male and female, Every time you see a male standing, Separated man into male and 
standing, that is half the image of God. Every time you see a female standing, that's half the image of God. Now, we were made for worship. The only time you see the full image of God again on the earth is when a man and his wife in covenant are in sexual intercourse. So, because of that, sex is actually worship. Because when man's full image is enacted, the purpose for man is to worship God. So when a man and his wife in covenant are having sex, guess what? God does not cover his face. So some of you that think that, hey, oh, it is the shame God. No, God is the author of sex. You know the shame man. He sits there to receive the worship. So when you take your body and you join it to somebody to whom you are not married, the purpose of sex does not change. It's still worship. But guess who is sitting there receiving the worship? You don't have to enter shrine to be a devil worshiper. All you need to do is speak for somebody that is not your spouse. You are the synagogue of Satan at that moment. You are defacing the image of God. You are playing with deep spiritual things that you have no business trifling with. Sex is worship. So lady, when you turn your husband down from sex, we get you. You are turning down worship. Hello, I'm not blaspheming. Because some of you, you they think you can call God and sex for the same statement. Now blasphemy. Lie. Be careful where you go with your body. So let me close this question by singing some of the school songs that they taught me. Be careful little legs where you go. Be careful little legs where you go. For the father of above is looking down in love. So be careful little legs where you go. <laughs> be careful little hands what you touch. Be careful little hands how you touch. For the father of above is looking down in love. So be careful little hands what you touch. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Loaded, loaded, loaded. Well, okay. Um, I think we can take maybe one more question. Mommy uh, Joyce, do you have a question? Okay, let's let you go first. Praise the Lord. The question that came to me, you know, when she was talking about husbands abusing the wives and giving her a low self-esteem. In some cases, some men may develop that low self-esteem. Let me give you an example. Especially now, because of the economic situation, sometimes you find the woman anymore. And some men find it difficult to handle it. And it can lead to that low self-esteem. How do you think or how can the man be able to tackle that. Praise the Lord. Okay. Whether it's the man or the woman that has low self-esteem in the relationship, it's not good for the relationship because generally people with low self-esteem don't do well. They don't do right. So, the problem comes when we draw our sense of self from material things. If your sense of self comes from your bank balance, when your bank balance is low, you are going to be low. If they come from material possessions, every time you see somebody who has more than you, you become jittery. So the first thing that should happen is that you draw your sense of self from the master, the one who made you. I am made in the image of God. Let me tell you where my, self, my low self-esteem began from. It didn't begin from my husband's house. My mother had six girls, okay? So, up until maybe like a month ago, somebody called my phone and I answered and said, hello. The person said, please, can I speak to your wife? I said, who do you want to speak to, Sarah and Christine? I said, I'm the one on the phone. No, sir, I mean your wife. You know that some of you were surprised when I opened my mouth. My voice is big. So, people think I'm a man on the phone. So, when I try to tell them, Sarah Reverend Christie, and they're still saying, I want to speak to your wife, sir. And I said, hello. They said, oh, Reverend Christie, good morning. <laughs> so I have a big voice. And they started by abusing my voice as a child. See your ugly voice. See your big, fat voice. 
See your rough points. And I started developing low self-esteem from there. I became quiet, not by nature, by constraint. Second thing that happened, my mother and my sister who were sitting in the sitting room, I was about seven years old or eight years old, I'm not even sure. I don't know what we're talking about. And my mother said, oh, I think out of all these six girls, Christy is the least pretty. She said, I'm not fine inside the girls. She did not call me ugly, but that's what I heard. How can you tell? How would you come to any ceremony? Then carry the picking, come on. <laughs> you they look the picking, picking no fine. But the mother is saying, isn't she cute? Isn't he cute? What do you say? You cannot say no. This person, why they say you know cute? You can't say that. You say yes, she's cute, she's cute. I don't know any mother who says her picking is ugly. My mother said that out of the six girls. I'm the least pretty. And my, my, my self-esteem dropped to the ground. Throughout my years growing up as a young girl, if any young boy came to me and said he wants to be my boyfriend, the first thing I used to ask him is, are you blind? And he would say, why do you say so? I said, mama, what mommy say I'm no fine? What do you really see? The first would say, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you understand? So, many times the issues with self-esteem do not begin from the marriage. Is, is transferred aggression, is, is baggage from the past. All of us have a responsibility to scrutinize our past and have God begin to repair the brokenness in our lives so that when we stand, we're not standing because we have money, we're not standing because we have status, we're not standing because we have connections, we're standing because Jesus loves me. That's all. Jesus called me. Jesus anointed me. Jesus has gifted me. Jesus has given me an assignment. Husband, father, wife, mother, doctor, teacher, dancer, usher, whatever. So when we begin to draw our self-esteem from God, it won't matter whether your wife is earning more or less. It won't matter whether your husband is earning or not earning at all. The tendency to want the tendency to want to put the man down is coming from a woman who herself does not know who she is. So she's basing her, her value on her paycheck. That's a terrible thing. What if you lose the job? What happens to your value? What if you have an accident and they cut off your two legs? Or you think bad things don't happen to good people? Bad things. If bad things don't happen to good people, Jesus will still be here. He died. It was a bad thing that happened to him. But good ultimately came out of it. So, we need to begin to go back to God and say, help my sense of self, help me to grow, help me to mature, and let it not matter what I have or don't have. Let my value come from you loving me and calling me. Well, please put your hands together for her. She's giving up her essence. We have to pray that the virgin will return. One last question, and uh, Reverend will release you after this one. This question is a bit, uh, I don't know, because it's almost looking as if you've touched it, but let me, let me read it. It says, what if as a child you have watched and even caught your father in adultery, and even till now he has not stopped? Then he stands on it and demands respect from his wife. He even currently has mistresses that he sent money to, but he never gives to his family the money, the money, but preferred to give it to his mistresses. Will you support divorce in this case? Because a lot is going on in that marriage, and I see my mom going through pain every day. I'll give it to the specialist. Ma. I'm not a specialist. I'm a student of the Bible. The only grounds for divorce that even Jesus endorsed is adultery. If it's been ongoing and your mother has stayed for this long, she's the one that has accepted the pain. Because you see, family, church people, and if you you people should stop telling people to stay and die in a marriage because of appearances. God never said one of the criteria for marriage is appearances. Hey, in our family, nobody has ever divorced. Nobody has ever suffered enough. And everybody is not the same. Very soon, 
what will happen to that woman is mental breakdown. So do you want a psychotic married woman or a divorced sane woman? If there is adultery and you can't take it, leave. I'm not afraid to say get the divorce and get a life. Especially look at this story. It's been going on for so long. So the woman has been living with chronic pain, chronic psychological and mental and emotional pain, including financial pain. And people will say to her, stay there, just bear it. That is the life of a woman. Now so marriage you be. Lie. That time that my husband hit me, I left. His mother sent for me. I told the mother, call him to. He sat down there. She said, my picking. I'm a woman like you. Now so woman like you. I said, hey, mama, wait. Wait. That is your generation. You people have no options. My generation has options. I will take the option. Mama said, are you threatening me? I said, call it what you want. The next time you lift your hand, I'm done. I'm not going to marry again. He said, but you're a pastor. I said, you are you not a Christian. <laughs> so you want to be beating me because I'm pastor. For what now? You touch me again, I don't marry again. I think the message went home. Because you didn't expect me to say that. Pastor, a human being. No be stone. You know be stick. You know be dumping ground. Praise the Lord. So, I could say divorce the person and go. But I could say if the Lord gives you grace to forgive and stay, stay. But, the reason you are complaining about him not giving money is that that woman has not been able to generate her own money possibly because of the kind of pain she's under. Get up! Stop living your life based on another person. God will never call you on the day of judgment and judge you based on your husband's misbehavior or right behavior. You are called to righteousness, full stop. Why are you waiting for him to give you money? Go get your own. In fact, one day, shock him. He said, hey, that's your mistress in the room of Take this 20,000, send to her. Cure of adultery immediately. Oh no, you have to find, you can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. That's insanity. Is the definition for insanity. So you will get your own money, get your own money. Say honey, you have not got to see it that way in in in, in Abba. When are you going now? See, I made this dress for you, specially for that. Next time you're going to Abba, wear this for my own money. Be fine. You go cure.
I've seen a friend in this particular very close friend of mine, who was divorced 17 years. Today, you will know the person. Today, they are back together, like it never happened before. So, our key is, whatever situation, take it to the Lord. When the Lord, look, the Lord can tell you, stay away. I want to deal with the heart of this man. Whatever the Lord says to us, let us be obedient to do. Be obedient. Be obedient. Who is obedient? I'll be useful. Hallelujah. Oh, we cannot but thank our sister. We can't. She's come to open to, to us. I, I know Christy personally. She never talks some, some things. There are some things that when we bring her back here to tell us. Because we always have, you know, she said something about chocolate. We like to chocolate difficult situations, though. Eat it the way it is. And that is your first treatment. It can be for a man and for the woman. Young people, as the marriage ministry invites you to have breakfast with us, including the married couples, you'll be allowed to express yourself in the line that our sister has talked with us. You'll also have opportunity to talk with our older mothers. It has never, no marriage is a bed of roses. Every rose has a thorn. There are processes in your life you can go through. Are you turning me off? Okay. When you hold on to your spouse, you will find out that in every man, I can have the slogan, even a mad man has friends. You need to identify who is closest to your spouse in difficult situations and begin to talk when you know that that person too does not have the same character. Praise the name of the Lord. Auntie Christy, we love you. We love you and we will continue to love you. She has gone through a lot. Criticism. She has not told us how, how she overcame criticism. That's another talk for another day. Some of us, small criticism, we don't call up. That's the woman that went through criticism and she's standing. And through it all, through it all, her children. See, when Chris talks about her children, it's not just her biological children. Sorry, I have to say that. She has adopted every child that her husband brought to her. Those children no longer know their mother. That is the mother that they know. It takes grace together. Can we give God a clap of praise? Can we pray for this? Perfect. People are asking if you came with some of your books. Well, they can get it online. Online. Okay, we'll send the uh, we'll send the website address to you. Okay. We'll send the uh, website address uh, so that we can get books. So, Brennan, can we all stand up and raise our hands and point to Reverend Christy Baturi that has blessed us so much today. If you agree with me, virtue has gone out of her and him that sows into other lives must also be replenished by our Father in heaven. And so, we're going to pray. We're going to ask not only that God will replenish, but that God will bring the overflow. Not only that, but that God will take her to another level of ministry. She's already international, so we're praying, Father, for more harvest, for an increase in everything that concerns her, 
this is her time to begin to reap and harvest all that she has sown into other lives. All the pain that she has gone through. We say this is Harimu, but Harimu has come. It has come. Father, begin to pray increase upon her. Begin to release the Shekinah glory and the anointing of the Lord. We stand before a very powerful altar, the rainbow altar, and the Lord himself is doing mighty things in our midst, and she has ministered at this altar. And we say, Father, take her to another level. We prophesy upon her life that by the next time we meet, Father, there will be testimonies. Testimonies of open doors. Testimonies of multitudes being brought into restoration through her. We're asking for a release of the anointing. We're asking, Father, for the power of revelation upon her. We're praying, Father, that you increase your person in her in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, Father, for the Shekinah glory, but to be upon her, the anointing that breaks yoke, that breaks iron, that breaks bars. That as she preaches with a microphone, people will be healed. Even before she starts to talk, she will begin to operate in that dimension in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We know that only you can bless her, and you that have been blessing her to keep on blessing her, we ask for strength. We ask for a renewal of her strength. We ask for that, that she shall be younger, that she shall even proclaim like Moses as he's 80, he felt like he was 40 years old. Father, let your hand be upon her. And Father, let her never lack for whatever she needs to do your work. Father, we pray complete restoration all around her. Everything about her family, you have made perfect in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, as you are promoting her, you are promoting everything that pertains to her. We thank you and we give you the praise and the glory for her life. Father, we thank you, Father, for, for bringing her in such a privilege. May you bless and bless and bless. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord, please sit down. Please I want you to impact the marriage ministry of this ministry. There's a fire that needs to go out. So if you know you are in the marriage ministry, please come out. Thank you. God bless you.